Imagine this, the world's oceans, seas, lakes, and rivers which made life on this planet possible and are the beating heart of planet Earth's biosphere and ecosystems can also provide humanity with infinite, cheap, and green electricity. Every day humanity wakes up to new innovations in the green power sector. Most of these innovations are related to solar and wind power. However, in recent years, we've been hearing more and more about ocean wave energy. Sadly, this sector is not actually new, and inventions for the effective utilization of water movement in the oceans, seas, and massive lakes for the production of green electricity has been around for a while, but are not implemented on a large scale. The ocean currents, waves, and tides never stop, and combined can produce more than enough electricity to power the entire planet. Interestingly, America's coastlines alone could generate up to 2.64 trillion kilowatt hours of energy using today's technologies. This means if the technology is improved, that amount could be doubled with even fewer coastal wave farms. Today we're going to look only at wave energy and how it alone can provide the world with more than half of its energy needs. The science behind oceanic wave energy is simple. The world's oceans and seas are constantly producing waves that never cease. These waves' movements can be harnessed in various ways and turned into electricity. It's an infinite source too because as long as the Earth continues to travel around the Sun and the Moon around the Earth, waves will continue to be a viable source of kinetic energy. The amount of energy produced from waves depends on several factors other than the quality and efficiency of the technology used to harness it. Things such as the wave's height, speed, length, and density. Even though these factors are unpredictable, still even the smallest waves can produce electricity. It's similar to how wind and solar power are dependent on factors such as wind speed and the amount of sunlight. Unlike solar power, which cannot be harnessed at night and during winter while clouds block the sun, and wind energy, which stops in the absence of winds, wave energy rarely stops and actually increases during winter and harsh weather. In terms of physics, the oceans and seas have a lot more potential energy for capture than the wind, because potential energy is calculated using mass and velocity. Thus, oceanic waves have more potential to transfer more energy since water has more mass and is denser than air. In recent years, major improvements in the technologies used to harness wave energy have been achieved. So let's take a look at some of these amazing inventions. We have to admit, the technologies for this sector are still being improved. The basic concept is to capture wave energy using devices that are placed on the surface of the ocean or submerged in the water. These devices are simply designed to move with the motion of the waves and convert the kinetic energy of the waves into mechanical energy, which is turned into electricity via generators. These devices, which are placed in groups, represent what are called wave energy farms that are connected to the power grid. The great news here is that more than 50% of the world's population lives close to coastal areas, hence it's easy to connect such farms to the power grid. There are several methods for harnessing wave energy including placing electricity generators on the surface of the ocean, utilizing the up and down motion of waves to power pistons and turn generators, using submerged buoys, using submerged panels, using oscillating water columns that use waves to move air to move turbines, and using floaters that are attached to existing structures such as breakwaters, piers, or jetties to capture the energy of ocean waves. Some of the most recent advancements in the field include buoys that float on the surface of the water and are anchored to the seabed. These buoys contain power takeoff systems that convert the motion of the waves into electricity, which is then transmitted to shore via an underwater cable. Other types of buoys are connected to pumps that drive high-pressure water through onshore turbines, generating electricity. There are also buoyant structures that oscillate in resonance with the incoming waves, driving a power takeoff system that generates electricity. And there are also systems that use submerged panels to capture the energy of ocean waves. The panel moves back and forth with the motion of the waves, driving a hydraulic piston that generates electricity. There are also advancements in fixed floater systems, which consist of floaters attached to existing structures, such as breakwaters, piers, jetties, or anything that is smashed by the ocean waves regularly to capture the energy of ocean waves. The floaters move up and down with the motion of the waves, driving hydraulic pumps that generate electricity. And of course, China is ahead of everyone else. They recently installed a very innovative 6,000-ton energy wave converter called the Nankun Mobile Power Bank. This amazing machine can generate up to 24,000 kilowatt-hours of electricity per day, 
which can feed more than 3,500 homes with electricity. This new invention represented a major leap forward over older, smaller kilowatt scale wave energy devices. The system is being replicated and distributed to remote coastal areas and islands that are just too far from the main Chinese power grid networks. Additionally, it's being used for blue economy projects that also tend to be in isolated remote coastal areas or very far from the shores. The Nankun device consists of a semi-submersible platform, a hydraulic system, a power generation system, a control system, and a mooring system. By absorbing the waves from the semi-submersible platform and utilizing their energy through the independently developed energy conversion system, the device achieves a three-stage energy conversion from wave energy to hydraulic energy and then to electricity. Needless to say, this device and other technologies are constantly evolving and improving. However, some serious obstacles still need to be effectively tackled. Developing, testing, and deploying new wave energy devices is a very difficult process, and the reasons are obvious. The number one obstacle is the ocean itself. Oceans are constantly moving. Waves can fluctuate from a few inches in height to a few feet or even meters depending on the area during the same day and mere hours apart during both winter and summer. The oceans are simply inhospitable, and waves can easily damage wave energy devices. Even submerged devices aren't spared, as the current can pull and push the systems and render them useless if not wrecked. Additionally, the oceans eat away at everything and anything. Rust issues are a big headache since steel parts have to be periodically treated and recoded to prevent erosion. Salty ocean mist and water are also notorious for decreasing the longevity of electrical and electronic systems. This means such components and wiring have to be sealed in a manner that effectively prevents water damage. So here's the pickle. These two issues combined mean that effective and feasible wave energy devices have to be ultra strong and rust resistant, and the electric and electronic components have to be water resistant and sealed. Such devices also have to last for decades with a minimum amount of maintenance or very low maintenance costs to make them commercially feasible on a large scale. These issues have to be resolved before corporations invest in larger scale projects that can be connected to the grid. Do you think wave energy farms will pop up in coastal areas in the near future? And why is the sector so far behind wind and solar power? Let us know in the comments section and please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching.